So I actually shot this video earlier today um, and then something went wrong with the recording. So I don't have the before um, of the, the silver whistle before it got wrapped. But never mind, because I've got it on another video. So let's just refer back to that now. And now I'm going to play you the footage that I did of wrapping the whistle. So we've got the whistle, um, six millimeter silver plated copper wire, tape, uh, wire cutter on my pen knife. Oh, and I forgot the rubber grips. You need the rubber grips. Bits of bicycle inner tube. I had to pull the head off, which we already, we already got rid of the glue in the last video, but it's still stuck on pretty stiffly. Um, now on my other whistle, as you can see, I, I wrapped it with brass wire, but um, not only is this a, a silver whistle, well, nickel plated, so silver in colour, but also um, I've noticed that after a while the brass seems to break, the brass it cracks and I've had to tape this one. Um, so I was thinking, let's see about this silver and copper, maybe that won't snap. So I want to give myself a little bit of extra room because I've got an ulterior motive with this whistle, this second B-flat whistle that I've bought. I'd actually like to see if I can shorten it, as per rumours I've heard, and make it into a whistle in the key of B. So I, in this case, I don't want to go right up to where the mouthpiece normally joins. I want to go a little bit below. So let's say about there. Um, and I'm going to go to the back of the whistle I've made a little L shape with my wire, can you see that? And I'm just going to tape it on. Um, there we go. No one's going to see this tape in the end because I'm going to wrap over it. Right, and now we're just going to start wrapping. Now, it's a bit difficult to do this, and like, well with the copper wire it was really hard, but with the silver over copper it seems actually quite a lot easier. So you can see I'm just turning, I'm just putting my, th there we go, just like that putting my thumb over the wire and turning and then we're getting this wrap. So I'm just gonna keep going with this. Let's see how long it takes. If you've got any kittens, you might find that this activity garners some interest from kittens. What do you think, Luna? Yeah. So the idea behind this wrapping, um, it's basically an idea that I sort of had during lockdown when I had um, only had plastic top cheap whistles and I quite wanted a nicer whistle but I couldn't try any and I wasn't brave enough to mail order something and not be able to try it. So I just thought well what's the difference between um, a more expensive whistle and a cheaper one and one difference was that the bore, this bit we're working on right now, is thicker on a session whistle. I was able to find that out from the internet without even having to try one myself. So I thought, well, what can I do to thicken the bore on one of my own generation whistles? And that's when I came up with the idea of, well, what if I wrapped it with wire? And um, this is just actually wire from a jewellery shop. People who, or jewellery sort of craft shop, people who make jewellery might be threading beads onto some wire like this. So now we're getting to the bottom. Um, what are we going to do now? <laughs> Takes a bit of skill to do this, by the way. The first one that I did got really, really looked really, really ugly. It was really uneven. So I've, uh, after you've done it a few times, it's okay. Right. So now what I want to do, I don't know if I can do this and show you easily. I want to make a little loop in the wire. There we go. Can you see that? I've made a little loop like that. And once I pull it tight, I'm going to be able to use that to hook the piece of wire over. Ah, let's go around. Around like that. There's my little, there's my little knobbly bit. So I'm going to get, it's difficult because it's shiny, but basically the little loop that I'm going to get, yeah, there we go. See, I've got it. It's all silver. How are you supposed to see this really clearly? I'll try and, there, can you see? I've got it underneath. And now I'm going to twist all the way back up. Twist, twist, twist. And we're going back up. Great. And then I'm going to do that again. I'm going to do another little twist again, <laughs> like we did last summer. Um, actually, 
in this case I was going to do a twist but I might not need to um, because there's a little bit of a kink in the wire at the top I think I can feed it through yeah great okay so there I've kind of managed to get that tied off but how do I actually tie it off well actually these rolls of wire seem really short normally they're a little bit longer than that so I think I'm going to have to put a second roll of wire on this top part here. Um, I'm going to do my little, I'm going to do my little loop again so that I can properly tie it off. So there's my loop. Now I'm going to go round, and then I'm going to go back through the little loop. And I'm basically going to wrap this piece around the loop there we go I've wrapped it around the loop <clears throat> and then in an ideal world I'd also be able to find a place to tuck that in but I can't seem to at the moment but I guess that doesn't matter because I'm going to do this basically I'm going to do the same thing again with a second, um, a second layer. So I'll just turn off the camera and, and do that. But it's going to be the same thing again. I'm going to tape on, wrap around a second layer. So I've wrapped the whole second spool around. Let me see if I can show you this tie off a little bit better on the second one. Okay. So here we go. I've made my little loop. And it's sticking out. Great. So when I come around, I, yeah, that's it. We're getting it now. So I can sort of just wrap it around like that. But that's basically it. And then you just try and cut off with the wire cutters, cut off the end and tuck it in anywhere you can tuck it in. It's on the good side. You can actually see a bit of blue, but yeah, it looks pretty good. And if you've just tried it and yours is a mess and you're feeling bad, don't feel bad. Cause look, this is, this is the first one that I ever did. Look at it, it's a mess. Um, some of them come out really well, some not so well. I thought that one came out pretty well. Crisscross pattern. That's the first ever one I did with the silver and copper. That came out quite badly. <laughs> Although there's something I quite like about it. Um, anyway, I normally also do a bit at the bottom, but I've run out of silver wire, so I can't do that on this one. Um, but yeah, it's going pretty good. But um, by the way, that thing where you lock it at the bottom and then do a spiral back up, um, I after a little while I found out that that actually just works much better to lock it to lock it in place. Uh, look at this one, the first one I did where I didn't actually do that. Um, that it's the coil has slid all the way down almost to cover the hole, and every time I play it, I have to push it up. So having the um, little notch at the bottom. And then um, spiraling back up, that helps to like yeah, prevent that problem. And we're back, so I'm going to play you the whistle now it's been wrapped. So do you hear a difference? Um, I know I, I definitely hear and feel a difference. I think that well, uh, it's not as much as a difference as it often is on the smaller whistles because um, I just ordered the same amount of, of wire so it, it didn't wrap as many times. I think it sounds a bit richer and it doesn't have um, overtones to it, like not that kind of that brightness and um, the whoof from the whistle sound, I guess. But I think you can hear it more clearly um, on the higher whistles. So maybe I'm going to just play you some of those. So that's funny, I already feel I don't like that. Um, it's got that shrillness to it. 
um, that just isn't there with the other two. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's muted necessarily. I wouldn't say that the wrapped ones are muted. I think they sound fuller as well. I find that when I want to go up high, like I must feel like I'm doing it badly because I'm uh, I, I make a mistake straight afterwards because I so much like, don't like the sound. It sort of makes my chest kind of tighten. Uh, I think for me, when I hear a whistle sound that I really like, it really I feel really happy and I feel like my body open up and I feel it kind of want to close down when I hear that sound that I don't like, the high sound I don't like. Oh. Um, that's what's really beautiful about, about the whistle is that it is a high sound and when it's right and it's it's like sort of lovely and heavenly and joyful. So I think that when you're trying out these tweaks, just um, sort of listen with your body. So there's your, your ears are there, obviously, but pay attention to what your body's doing. Does it, does it want to open up towards the sound or does it want to sort of shy away from it? And when you've got the right sound for you, you'll, you'll really know that. Um, so, you know, I think this is a great thing to do. Um, wrapping the whistles, for me, it's been a, a real game changer. Uh, it really makes a difference because these um, generation whistles that I like, they cost about seven pounds, um, ten pounds if you have to have them posted, and then the the wire cost uh, five pounds. It's um, the brass wire is cheaper, but it ended up breaking after a while. Um, this is copper, silver plated, and uh, that was there was fifteen meters of it. It cost five pounds fifty. So at its cheapest, if you got your whistle for seven pounds, you could be paying kind of twelve pounds fifty. Um, for it up to this point, a tiny bit of maybe five pence worth of blue tag, and twelve pounds fifty of it's a whistle that you can be happy with, is a big difference rather than if you found that you were happy with a, a twenty pound whistle or a fifty pound whistle, um, because then if you wanted a set of five, you know it becomes more and more expensive. Sort of twelve pounds fifty for five whistles, it's what sixty two pounds fifty. Um, whereas if you liked a £50 whistle and you wanted five different ones, then you'd be looking at £250. So I think it's really important that music can be accessible to everybody. And the whistle is really one of those instruments where you can get a really nice one for very cheap, especially if you're modifying it yourself. So yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed what you've learned. The only thing that I haven't tested yet is what happens if I switch the mouse pieces, pieces over, because this is my fully tweaked um, brass uh, B-flat with the um, weighted mouthpiece with a weighted pewter ring around the mouthpiece as well and uh, this is the new one that I've been modifying specifically for these videos so let's see what happens if we swap the mouthpieces over So there's a real big difference between the two mouthpieces. That's interesting. So that's something to take into consideration as well. Um, we've got two tubes that sound different to each other, probably because they're slightly different materials. But these two mouthpieces are definitely different to each other. Blue and red, I don't think it's a difference between the blue and red generation models. I think it's just by chance. Um, the There is, the, uh, obviously a, a weight on this one but it actually just sounds a little bit more raspy and less clean and I think that's got to be nothing to do with what's on the outside it'll be what what's to do uh, with what's on the inside in there so they do sound a little bit different so you, I've got to decide do I like uh, the slightly cleaner sound or the slightly raspier sound and on which tube so yeah these things make a difference to get the exact sound that you want and it's worth bearing that in mind that you know whenever you buy a whistle or the mouthpieces aren't necessarily going to sound the same as each other, even though they come out of apparently the exact same mould. Well, hope you find the whistle that you want and uh, that you can afford. And uh, let me know what happens when you try wrapping your whistle.